This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. So I was going to take a minute to talk a little bit about paracentesis and the common indications and a specific case that uh, acts as a springboard for spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, uh, which is one of the reasons why uh, we would do a paracentesis to assess diagnostically. So in terms of indications for paracentesis, the most common thing that we would do is sort of for therapeutics, uh, for comfort. Um, So that would be sort of the typical large volume paracentesis where we'll take off up to five to six liters. In terms of diagnostic paracentesis, what are the things that we would be considering as far as a patient who comes in with a first time ascites? Infectious. Infectious, so that, uh uh-huh. So, so the big categories in general are to determine whether or not it's a transudative or an exudative. So transudative would be most commonly uh, because of portal hypertension. So you have increased pressure in the portal uh, systemic circulation and just the pressure causes fluid to leak out in, in third space into the perineal compartment. Transudative would be things that would be like ovarian cancer, for example, or other malignancies where you have leakage of proteins into the abdomen and that draws out fluid. There's some uh, parameters that we use when we take off the fluid, specifically, you know, something like the concentration of albumin in that fluid and compare it to the serum and make the distinction. This case was, you know, a patient that we would very typically see, which would be a patient that has known transudated cirrhosis, so typically alcoholic cirrhosis from portal hypertension, who comes in with fever and abdominal pain. And part of the evaluation is, in addition to looking for other causes of potential sepsis syndrome, we would be considering whether or not that patient seeded that peritoneal fluid. It's actually particularly susceptible when it's a transudative cause of cirrhosis and transudative causes of ascites. Any idea why that would be? I mean, you probably have a sense that patients who come in with sort of alcoholic cirrhosis oftentimes get aspirate or get TAP and looking for uh, SBP, whereas people with things like ovarian cancer, much less likely. And it's thought that the proteins that are in a exudative, like ovarian cancer, are protective because among those proteins are antibodies and other things that the immune system uh, uh, uses to clear that infection. So in a patient that comes in with fever, abdominal pain, transudative causes like alcoholic cirrhosis, we do a diagnostic paracentesis uh, to look for a cause uh, of infection. As far as sort of the pathogenesis of that, has it there. So portal hypertension causes bowel edema, and that bowel edema allows enteric flora, bacteria, to translocate. So not surprisingly, E. coli is the most common pathogen. As far as the clinical presentation, it's fevers, chills, and abdominal pain. And then, you know, the parameters that we use when we send that fluid off Uh, The time-honored one is, you know, greater than 50 polys, PMNs, polymorphoneutrophils. So, or it's greater than 1,000 white blood cells. And then the management, sort of predictably, the most common pathogen is E. coli, is uh, cephalosporins. So third-generation cephalosporin is the classic, so ceftriaxone. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a perspective on, you know, why we perform paracentesis in general the different subtypes of ascites, namely transudative and exudative, and specifically in patients who have transudative ascites due to portal hypertension, most classically alcoholic cirrhosis, why they get predisposed to SBP, how we diagnose it, and how we treat it. The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA, PRA, 
Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, and if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.